We are taking apart a brand new set of Apex irons and we're going to reshaft them with some Acra TZ iron shafts. A lot to unpack here. Let's go get her done. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here and this is McGolf Channel where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, golf club fittings. Also, your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom down here, and that way you get more of this information as it drops, and it gets out to the YouTube universe. If you would, join us. We have a live stream, and it's called What's in My Drawers Golf Talk, and it's all about what's in my drawers down here in the shop, and it's about the same things that we talk about here in the video, and it's live, and we talk with people from around the world, it's a great time, lasts about an hour, hour and a half, and it's really amazing some of the questions that get asked. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, so join us, 5.30 Eastern PM or 17.30 for you guys across the pond. So let's get started. <coughs> All right, so we, uh, Callaway's Apex, right? Callaway's Apex, there are three different models of Apexes. There is the uh, muscle back, there is the cavity back, that guy, there we go, the Apex, and the cavity back, and then the Pro. And here's a Pro model. There we go with that one. All right, so what's the difference between all of them? All right, as one might expect, the muscle back and the cavity back are, are forged in 1025 steel, and there's a lot going on in them. So as much as Ford product can go. So what you'll get is, in, the, in both of them, it is going to be a 1025 steel, it's gonna be forged, and then they're gonna use this weight to help, and then where there might be placements of other weights in the toe or the heel in order, depending on what you want the club to actually accomplish, okay? Now they also have what's called, I call it progressive CG meaning that the center of gravity and the taller clubs, like the three through the five or four through the six, somewhere in that area, is lower. The idea is to get underneath the equator of the ball so the ball flies higher. In the middle of the group, which would, could it be from that six to the eight, right? Six to the eight, six to the nine, depending on where you're at with that, uh, is more in the middle because that's your average, that's the middle of set, so the middle ball flight. And then the last bit could be the nine, and now it's not pitching wedge or a wedge, it's the 9, 10, and 11. Going back to the roots, right? Going back to the roots, 9, 10, and 11. Matter of fact, this is a number 11 right here. Okay, so uh, that one goes a little bit higher so that you can control the ball a little bit more. So when they mean that, is there gonna be this great big movement in here? Not really. So what you're gonna have, let's just say, this is one, this is two, this is three. Now they could move it more than that, but what you'll see is um, in the top, right, in the, in the top end of the set, the cavity is actually a little bit deeper, all right? The cavity in the, in the cavity back model is a little bit deeper, and that, when it's deeper, it allows the CG to go down. In the more wedge-like or the short game irons, that cavity is very shallow, and that pulls that CG up. All right, that's how they're pulling this off. Now, in the Pro model, of which we've got to mess with that, the Pro model is a what they call a hollow body. And uh, in the top end of the hollow body, the five and the six iron uh, in this particular set is forged out of 455 uh, carpenter steel. All right, 455 steel. And it is a multi-piece club because it is a hollow body. And the remaining set after the six, so seven down, is all 1025 uh, forged steel. Now, this set has urethane microspheres in it to help dampen the, the feel and allow the face to be a little thinner so that you can create ball speed. And, and that's the, that is basically the theory of a hollow body. And it's not too bad. It's a good look. It uh, has more of a... I'll say a, a kind of a muscle blade kind of vibe to it. If you, if you look at it, 
you know, you got that bar going across the middle. You still have the weight that's going down here. And this is a very shallow, very, very shallow cavity. And that's the six iron. So, uh, if you're a good ball striker, a very, very good ball striker, then the, the pro model or some sort of combination, right? If you really wanted to be super combo, like you could do the four five in the pro model, you could go six, seven, eight, possibly, yeah, six, seven, eight, possibly nine in the CB. And then in the 11 and 12, go into the, uh, the muscle back. It's purely up to you. Now, the other thing that they've done, and I'll use the other one, in most cases, what they've done in the sole, de in the sole design, of course, these are all going to have thin top lines in them, the sole design. So the leading edge in this thing has been killed, all right? It's been scooped. They say it looks worn, and that's true. It's more of a rounded kind of variety, and then the backside is more beveled off. And so what's that do? One, it doesn't turn your club into a digger. It doesn't have a sharp leading edge, so you're not playing what they would call a shovel. Okay. What this allows you to do is get through the turf. Now, if you're a divot taker, this thin, it's a thinner sole, so you're probably going to still take a pretty good sized divot. If you're a picker, you're going to love this thing, right? This thing is just going to be phenomenal as far as getting through the turf. Now, whether it's thick, thin, you know, whether you're playing a very well manicured course or maybe, you know, not one that's not so much, this thing will still get it, right? It'll still get through it and you'll still be able to get it up in the air. Now, to kind of give you an idea, the, the 11, which is the A wedge, they're all 50 degrees. The pitching wedge is where all the things start changing and it's only very little. Where the, the pro model will be 46, and the, and the CB and the MB will be 45. Then you get up to the five iron and the five iron, it will be 23 degrees for the MB and the CB where it'll be closer to 25 degrees. Okay, so what you have is a different spacing element going in there. So that's what we're doing. So these things originally came with the Elevate Tour, uh, tour shaft and Elevates came out with another tour shaft. They're having a pretty good success with the Elevates in the what they call the MPH series, which is 85s and 95s and various flexes. I do like it. It does fit a lot of people. Uh, however, this golfer wants something different. And we ended up after a handful of messages back and forth because this is actually going to the West Coast. We decided to go with some Acra TZ 105s, right? Acra TZ 105s. Now, this is the latest offering from Acra in the iron shaft category. They updated their I series, which is their base model, or their, we'll call it their flagship model. Uh, the TZ is one that has a much, much more stable tip in it, meaning that you have a little bit more control. Now, I have the 95s of these in my club, and, uh, and they do exactly what they say. They don't veer off, they, uh, they go right where you aim them in the whole nine yards. Now, what this has, as you can tell, this is a, what I call an ion plated uh, coating on it to give it that uh, steel look. The funny part is when I don't tell anybody that it is graphite, they go, oh man, that's a really nice feeling steel until I tell them that it's graphite. <laughs> now they use, uh, gra uh, Acro use three different technologies. One's called the uniform taper technology, meaning that from this end, now, all the way down to this end is one uniform taper. Why is that important? It is important because as one uniform taper, it's the way it releases energy into the golf club, i.e. the golf ball. And, one, and a uniform taper really is a neat way of letting the, the energy that you're putting into it with swing speed get down to this area. Okay, another one is the S3, which means that it goes through their version of a quality control check via computer and it gets checked. And then there's some numbers that get written down at this end so that they know that when they select a set that when they send them to me, they're very, very, very consistent. So far, so good, right? And then the other one is the, uh, the constant weight. All right, I think it's constant weight. Anyway, the three little technologies that make it a really nice shaft. And I can say that from personal experiences, I've had mine for a year and I haven't had any problems as of yet. Okay. So there's all that. There's, now that we have all that. So why is that? Well, I guess he was looking for something a little heavier 
uh, something a little bit more controllable and something that will, da uh, will dampen vibration. That's what graphite does, right? It dampens vibration. And the 105, I'd put up this 105 against most of the other steels that are out there as far as, you know, just really wanting to chase one. You could do that here. All right. So what do we got to do? We got to tear these things apart. Now they are ungripped, which is very cool because we are going to put the, uh, the Golf Pride uh, CP2 wrap midsize on there. Now, another part of this is that we're also going to put in some BBNF ferrules. Now, I happen to know about this, <laughs> that there's a collar in here. So we're going to have to do a little collar trick, and I'll show you that one as well. So again, this is going to be a, a simple disassembly, and then we're going to talk about uh, the frequency matching and the spine and flow, because he requested it. And then uh, we'll talk about just a real quick assembly. Uh, I'm not going to do the putting on the grips for you because they're on other videos out there. It's in probably going to be in one of these two corners. And if you want to know about it, send me it and we'll talk about it in great detail on another video. Uh, and then we'll uh, show you how they look at the very end. So let's get started. Now, before we get started, I really want to get, I got to get a drink here because it's been a fairly long day. So let me get this. Let's get started. <laughs> All right. So this is from the last build. Got to take that back. All right. All right, here we go. We're going to start with the Pro model first. And it's like anything else. Uh, Got to heat it up about a minute. Only on that side. Only on that side. And twenty on that side. Now, the odds of me being able to get this to break without a, without a grip on it are really small. So I'm going to go to my uh, shaft, my speed clamp, and I'll get this off here in a second. Okay, easy peasy, right? It uh, just turns right off. Now, this is the important part. You have to make sure that this thing is free from impediment because the if you don't the glue will not adhere to the sidewalls. Alrighty, looks like I got it all out. Yep. And I don't know if you guys can see or not. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but right there. There we go. There's a collar. There's a collar in there, and that collar means we got to do something else. What is that something else? You'll see here in a minute. So, all right, there's the first one. Let's just keep going. Now the way to do this is just it's 20 seconds to 25 seconds in in three quadrants and that helps spread the heat in order to break the epoxy bond. Now in a lot of cases if you've not done this in the past I would suggest that you use uh, leather gloves to protect yourself from the heat and that way you don't make the mistake of grabbing the hosel while it's super hot. and. Let me remind you that we've all done it, 
and uh, once you get that reminder you never forget <laughs> and we put it in here in this clamp so I can get some torque on it and as you can see it doesn't take a lot but it's more than I can do with my hand all right now so far the uh, I haven't damaged too many of the of the ferrules so it could have been reused for that as well Alrighty, so we're all done with that one. Now we got to go to the assembly phase. All right, so here we are in building, <laughs> building the six iron, and we have the six iron shaft with us. And so these are 370 shafts, and those are modified. We'll call I, I like to call it a modified 335. The very, very, very bottom of this thing is tapered, and everything else is 370. So, uh, particularly on this one. I know you may not be able to see it, but there is a truckload of meat on the bottom of this club, so, or the bottom of the shaft. So we're going to be able to cone it a little bit so that'll fit in there just fine. Now the other part of this is it takes what I would call a centering ferrule. Being how we're going to put on these B, B, and Fs, what I've got to do is go get the centering ferrule, cut off the collar, put it in there so that it will hold it in place so it doesn't waggle out. Now, when you pick this TZ up, it is you can tell that it is weighted towards the tip of the club, meaning that's going to come out a bit on the high side for swing weight. And that's okay in a lot of cases for the better players. They like a little bit heavier club. Uh, the balance on this thing, if we look at it, is way up here. Oh, we got to go this way. Here we go. It's right about here. And that's more, you know, that's right, probably right in the middle, which means it'll be a little bit tip heavy. So... What does all this mean? So if you were going to put it into the frequency machine, it's going to come out extraordinarily stiff. That's where we got to talk about profiles. When we talk about profiles, you hear stuff like tip stiff, butt soft, mid section does its thing, all that kind of stuff. So if you think one shaft is stiff is going to be like another shaft stiff, you're, you're just sadly mistaken. You'll, you'll never ever make it to that spot. For instance, on this guy, if I put it in the five iron with no tipping, it already comes out very, very high. Okay, so what do I do? I, I, I take it and because I know it's going to play very stiff as far as it's going to, the profile is going to be very stiff. What I'm going to do for this uh, golfer because he wanted to be in the stiff range so that it plays like he wants, I'm not going to trim the entire amount. I'm only going to trim about half. So I did about a half of an inch on the last one, which I would have done either one or one and a half inches. But on this one, I'm going to I'm going to trim this only an inch at the six iron in order to keep it in the frequent for whatever number I start with, then I'll frequency match to that particular number. So let's keep going. Mark my inch, go cut it off. Normally I would use fishing string in here, and I very well may, look at that. All right, let's do that. Let's put some fishing string on there. So what I did instead is I coned the top of the shaft so it would get in there and wedge itself into where it needed to go. And I've already done my flowing. So this is where the matching and everything else comes into play. All right, got it at the designated length I want it to be at. I've got my line at the 12 o'clock position. We're gonna get us a frequency number, which is right back where I wanted it to be. All right. All right, we'll mark that, and then we need to find the flow. Now on this one, if I recall from my, from my build, uh, was not easy. So let's see if we can find it easier today. And that's not doing what I want it to do. So let's go up a little bit more. That's not doing it either. So these shafts are marked with uh, two different spines in them. A hard, like a harder spine and a, a softer spine. And... And, this, and then I went and found it, and it was slightly off of those two. And so now it's a matter of, now I'm in hunt and peck mode. 
because it's not working out. There we go. That was closer. There it is. Gotcha. All right, so the logo is up on this one. The golfer also said he wasn't uh, wasn't label sensitive, so this ought to work out just fine. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm putting a line with the Forge 24 in order for it to line up when we go to assemble it. On to the next one. So now, in most cases, and it's very odd that you don't get it, is normally it's half inch increments. Now, there will be a time where they're not, and if you want it, what I call nibbling, if you wanted to go a quarter of an inch, test it, and then see where your increments are going in order to do this. But since I've got history with this, I know the half inch works. All right, now we're into the CBs, and you can see I coned it already, and it got right in there and fit pretty good. All right, let's see where I'm at. Seven. Now he wanted these a quarter inch longer than standard, and normally these are on the inch, like there's 38, 37 and a half, and so on. So these are 37 and three quarters, 37 or 38 and three quarters, 38 and a quarter, so on. 42. So I'm looking between a four and a five inch jump between frequencies in order to match my my slopes that are on my chart and so far I'm getting those. Not too far off. So we can go like that. Nope. The other way. Well, that's it, but the head is shaking so bad. fishing line to it. Now let's see it move and shake. We'll start right there again. We'll find this bad boy. There it is. A much smoother line when it doesn't shake. <laughs> so what's the gist here? So number one, you got to know what the typical tip trimming codes are. And if you don't know, nibble it, meaning start at zero and then take a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then see where it happens. And then you'll know how often the, the flex will jump. The other part is, is that you got to have a good weighting in the club heads, because if they're not together in that, in that span, then your trimming is going to need to be adjusted to be able to suit that, assuming you're not going to want to add weight. All right. If you go to add weight, then you've got to understand that depending on the types of weights that you add, that in, in the particular case here, that the tip weight would not fit in the bottom of this. So you, now you're gonna talk about modifying tips. I wouldn't necessarily go there if you were a beginner. So therein lies your issue, right? Now, if you had access to all the Apex goodies that you could probably change that back weight and up it or lower it as the case may be in order to get where you need to be. Fortunately for this set, they're really, really good, save maybe one, in which case I might modify that. Now, the other part is, and now we're trying to find frequency. Frequency is solely dependent upon the profile, whether it's very butt stiff or it is, is butt soft, because that's what we're testing here. All right, if you're, and so if you find something, for instance, uh, KBS Tour 90s, the most 90 gram sh steel shafts are going to be uh, what I would call butt soft. And when you go to frequency them, they're going to come out soft and everybody's going to want to tip trim a lot in order to get there. That's not the case. It's a different profile and it actually is not bad for you guys that are slicers in order to bring the whole club around. Now in this particular set, this is one made for a guy that's a late releaser. 
I got a late releaser, has a pretty good ball striker, that kind of situation. And that's what the reason why this profile should work for that particular golfer. What we really need to be talking about is profiles. Maybe in another another day with another guy that's you know a shaft manufacturer, we could do that. So anyway, spine flow. So we did the spining, which is finding the hard side. Uh, Acra always gives me a couple of air to choose from anyway, but I always find some others that are maybe a little disagree with the computer. Nevertheless, what it is then once you and that's the what they call the hard side. Then what I do is I put it 12 o'clock with the club in the playing position up in this neck of the woods, and then I twang down. When you twang down, then it ought to create a flat line. When it creates a flat line, you know you're flowing and it's in that position that you would want it to be in. So now we got frequency. We're pretty good with our swing weights because every, all the weights are matching up. And now it's just a matter of trimming and getting them to fit. So let me finish the rest and then we'll get into the how we make our centering ferrules. Okay, so now we're ready to do some gluing. Now this is the, the tricky part when using, when using BB and F ferrules when you have a club that has a hosel. Now in steel, sometimes that won't make such a big difference because the tip can handle it. Uh, the thickness of this tip could probably handle as well, but we're gonna do it right, whether we wanna have steel or not. Now, what I did is I had to find a ferrule, a, a, a colored ferrule that would fit in this. And what fits in this just perfectly is as far from a diameter point, not a depth. A diameter point is the PG, a PXG 370 ferrule. Now it also fits in a sundry, it's also good for a ping, but this is what it does. Now what I use is a, I use a box knife or what they call utility knife and I use a straight edge and I just cut it. And what I do is I rock it back and forth until I score it or I make uh, penetration through and then I just cut all the way down. Gives me what I need. Now in this particular instance, it sticks up just a hair too much, right? A hair too much. And it took me a while, I kind of stumbled, well, how do you make that go away? Well, you could say, well, I'll just sand it. Well, that's one way of doing it. Uh, but then you run the risk of modifying the top of, uh, of the hosel. We don't want to do that. So what I found out is that by using my ferrule belt, I just put it on there and I, and I make it go down. It, it's easier and it doesn't hurt anything. So. I want you to show you that. You can see just a little bit hanging out. It's not very much, so it doesn't take a lot. But uh, now, you'll see this. I'm gonna go to the ferrule belt and I'll be right back. Okay, quick trip back. Now, you can't see it anymore. So the better part is when you know it is when you put it on top of there and it looks smooth. All right, so that's what we're gonna to do to all of these. So give me a few seconds here. Now what this means is they'll be made individually for each individual club, although I imagine if it was universally made, you could pull them right back out and use them in any one if they did it right. So let's keep going. All right, so now we got this. All right, so the thing with these BB and Fs is they're extraordinarily tight and the, and the shafts with the coating on them could be extraordinarily wide. So what I've done is I've drilled these out with a 3 8 inch drill in order to make them bigger so they're easy to put on. So let's put on a couple and then you can get to see what I'm doing. First and foremost, we've got to make some glue. Since this is going to take some time, we're going to use the DP420, which is specifically for golf clubs. Come to find out, it's also just a hair less expensive than the 810, which is, a, which is what you see them use on the tour. Uh, but the stuff they use on the tour is quick dry for quick usage. And if I had a small time frame, I would use it myself. But since we got time and we got all these other intricacies, it's better to have something that cures a little bit longer. Alrighty, so about 60 seconds worth of turning. The whole idea of getting rid of that is to get rid of air bubbles, okay? So we get a little bit on here. This is this does twofold. This to allow the ferrule to slide and also to keep it on there eventually when it's all done. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make it go down the right length. And we do that by pushing down with the golf club in hand. Hey, so it's not really a big, it's gonna sit like this. Now, everything works just like it's supposed to. Put a little bit on the collar. We put that in the collar, now it's taking up that space. Now, get a little bit of glue for the head. I'm making sure that when I go back in, I look and making sure that 
there's an even application of the of the epoxy in there and then I make sure my line matches up with my Forge 24 and then I pound it to seat it. All right, now because it's white, the ferrule is white and I'm using black epoxy, the real trick here is to get it all. Get it all from the bottom. You can see I'm still capturing some. There we go, and then get it all from the top so that when we go to clean it, you don't see any of it. All right, a little piece of tape to prevent the ferrule creep from happening. And we move on to the next one. All right, it's time for some ferrule turning. And the biggest thing is the glue that I was using has about a, uh, I don't know, about, it says 20 minutes, but I let it go for a couple hours. We're here and it's in the afternoon now, daylight savings time, so it's almost six. And uh, this is the glue. So it's already settled, right? All right, so we know that when we're working with it, it's going to not move and shape and all that, or shift and that kind of stuff. So here's what we're gonna do. One by 42 felt belt, 1800 RPM. We don't have a whole lot to remove, so we don't have to lean into it too hard. Then we're gonna take acetone and go the 90 degree way of doing it. And then we're gonna get onto the unstitched buffing wheel. Now this is a new wheel for me, uh, just put it in Oh, a week ago, and it's it's about an inch taller than my other one was. And I've had that other one for, it, it, you can count it in years, right? I think I've replaced it once in 20 years. So these things last quite a while. And we use the, the yellow polish I get from Grizzly in there. So I'm going to show you two, and then we'll finish the rest. Okay, so why the tape? The tape is there in case, it's from an old habit from when I was using a linen belt. The linen belt used to have the ability to curve up and it would cut into the paint and it would make it look bad. Felt belt's pretty innocuous, meaning that it's not going to do that a lot, but it's just in case, okay? Now you always see me and I'm doing like this and I'm testing it. What is that? What I'm doing is I'm feeling to make sure that the transition from the hosel to the ferrule is extraordinarily smooth. And because that's the test of a club maker when you go into club makers places, you'll see them doing that to see whether or not you have that enough detail to be able to produce a good club. Next piece. Okay, I got some cut up paper towels and they're really, uh, it's doused with acetone. And now I'm going 90 degrees to the way that I uh, turned the ferrule. And that's to get rid of some of the, the ridges that I may may show up from the felt belt. Also, I use it to do an inspection of the ferrule as I'm turning it around to make sure that uh, I don't have anything extra that doesn't need to be on there. Maybe a piece of glue that stuck on there or something that might, you know, a ferrule separation that I didn't see earlier. It also allows me to remove the remaining part of the, of the pin line that I use for, a, uh, for assembly when we go to do that. Now that's done, I, you normally can do about four on each side, so I could do a whole set, but for the showing you, that's what we're doing here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let it sit there for just a little bit so that what can happen is the ferrule, the plastic, can get really, really soft, and if you go right into it, you can really hurt the ferrule. So you let it set, let the acetone evaporate, let the plastic reset itself. Now the bb and are pretty stout, so we don't have to wait that long. So long enough for me to dress this wheel. There we go. 
just a little bit of polish in order for it to for work for us. We'll start from here. All right, so what you saw was using the polishing, I was going the opposite way. It's very much like detailing your car. And then what you do is you wipe it down. It's like taking polish off of a car. Make sure, and what you do is you final inspection, get a good feel of it. And if you look at it, it should look pretty good. There we go, a lot. See that shine coming off of it? That's what we're looking for. All righty. So I've got all that. So we've really talked about what it takes to get through um, an Apex. These are brand spanking new. I mean, they haven't even been hit yet. We found, what did we find out about Apexes? Well, we found out that they're kind of a, what I would call a quasi taper tip club. Could you put a taper tip in them? For sure. Could you put a parallel tip in them? Yeah, with a little bit of help. Uh, but you need this, the centering ferrule to make it work. Uh, what else did we learn? We learned that we learned that the uh, the Acra TZ iron is probably a little more head weighted than it is back weighted, so you don't you know hear the counterbalancing. It's definitely not that. We also know that it's always for the player that's going to be releasing a little bit later. We know that, and what else? and then we talked about ferrules and how to put those BB and Fs on ones that have collars and how to address that. That was actually pretty cool and then how to finish them. Now, the rest of the build, if you want to see that there, I'm sure there'll be something in the way of builds. If you go back into my library, we've done bunches of these, and it's the same process. You measure, you cut, you grip. And I've got my grips lined up from lightest to heaviest to go from tallest to the shortest. Now, they're all within a gram, so the impact is virtually zero. I could pick up any one of them. Alrighty, so, uh, hope you learned something. If you got any questions, put them in the show notes. It's really kind of cool taking apart the Apex irons. That's, that was kind of unique, considering they've only been out for a couple weeks. Uh, again, it, we have a live stream. It's on Mondays at 17.30 or 5.30 Eastern Time. Uh, join us. It's going to be a good time. It's a nice live discussion. And as always, let's see your scores. Go low.